Hey, welcome to the Christ Revealed YouTube channel. I got a great interview coming up for you. Really great to be here with you. Enjoy this interview. This is maybe the ultimate consideration is the idea of a relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what has come out. I think it's something that's, uh, I don't, maybe I won't call it unique, but a distinguishing characteristic is to say that the ultimate goal is to have a relationship with Christ mm -hmm. and a relationship with God. And that, as you said, you know, there's multiple interpretations and conflict and tensions, but but the is is the edict or the you know the the conclusion of this that you know, the, that you aspire to is to get to that relationship. Yes, I think that the bottom line is every human being is made in God's image. Every human life is valuable. People are very broken. God desires to have relationship. Mm -hmm. God's Holy Spirit is seeking people. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is out there trying to bring healing and relationship and, and hope. And the love of God is best reflected in how Jesus laid down his life. So if people can come to an understanding of how deeply God loves them as individuals, God is the perfect father. He's not like us, you know. We fail as parents. We are we get angry, etc. But God is the perfect father is a ferociously loving father. So much so that he would allow Jesus to model his love by laying down his life. Now that's a high price to pay. That means that God's love for us is strong. It's like Keflar. It is something that is unbreakable. And if we allow ourselves to enter into that relationship and that love, nothing will shake it. To me, this was the most important thing, you know, to transform my own understanding of my relationship with God. Because I grew up Catholic and I always, you know, carried this weight of guilt. I was like the scrupulous kid. It took all my courage to go to confession. It's not that the truth of who Jesus is isn't there. It is there. But, f but for me to get to that point where I felt like I was safe in God's arms and my relationship with him couldn't just be broken mm -hmm. because I thought a bad thought or I got angry with my sister or something, but that secure, unbreakable love of God, which is articulated, for example, in Romans chapter 8. What can separate us from the love of God? He who gave up his own son for us will not let anything, you know, separate us from him. I mean, he already paid this ultimate price. So neither death nor life nor angels, all these things, nothing can separate us from that love. I mean, do we hear that? Yeah. <laughs> or in, in Romans chapter 5 where he says, If while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, how much more are we going to live with him? If while we were his enemies, if while we were at enmity, he did these things, one hardly will ever lay down their life for a good man, but no one ever lays their life down for a bad man, and yet Jesus laid down his life. So this is Paul's way of saying, this relationship is sure. I want you to relax in it. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you're a slave. Don't feel like you could be cast out at any moment. Relax in the fact that God so totally loves you, and be happy in that, and be like a child. You're not called to be his slave. You're called to be a child. You're called to be confident in his love. You're called to be like a two-year-old who runs in and climbs in the bed with their mom and dad, and they all tickle and laugh. Mm -hmm. You are called to realize that assurance so that you can be set free to love other people. Mm -hmm. Because it's only in being secure that actually your service to God becomes something that is freely given and not just obligation. It's something that becomes transformative. So that is something God wants for every human being. And like I say, he's actively pursuing it. Who knows how the mystery is that people will come to relationship with him, but he knows the people who are responding to whatever light they have, whether all, the only light is the world of nature, mm -hmm. whether the only light they have is their conscience. If they say, yes, I want to know then the Spirit of Christ is drawing them, and God knows those who are His children throughout the world. 
And it really gives a different tone to the, the sense of it when you say is to relax into this. Yeah, which is hard to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never heard it presented that way, and it makes a, a lot of sense to me, is the sense of, you know, that this isn't like, you know, I think people get very anxious about the idea of it. Totally. <laughs> yeah, you know, right? And, and for good reason. It's, it's sort of an intimidating thing, it's right? Me. Yes. But the idea to relax into this relationship. It's safe. Yes, yes, it's a safe relationship. The other thing we know about life is that life is hard. Mm -hmm. Whether you walk in a relationship with God or you don't walk in a relationship with God, you are going to experience conflict, illness, mm -hmm. accidents, loss, hurt. So you, that's just the human condition, and right. it will be that way until after our deaths. So you can sort of have a choice. Do I walk through that valley on my own? Or do I walk through that valley with God present in my life? Because God doesn't promise to take the difficulties away, mm -hmm. but he promises to give them meaning, mm -hmm. to use them for good, and, uh, and to be present in the pain. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it's just like an easy, quick fix for all the difficulties that we would experience, but he can be present, and he cares, and he can comfort, and he can pour out his love. Yeah, and, and so it's hard for us to relax into it, you know, and we work hard and we're motivated, but the motivation needs to come from love and freedom and joy, not from obligation and stress and, a, a, you know, feeling like a slave. And one other thing I want to dive into a little deeper in what you said is that the Holy Spirit seeks us. Mm -hmm. So meaning that a lot of times people are going out trying to find it, Mm -hmm. But really, the, the sense that you have about it is that it's seeking us. What, so can you elaborate a little bit there? Yes, I think that um, God's purpose is to have relationship with every human being. So, you know, the world is pretty huge. This is a hard job to organize. <laughs> I would go administratively crazy if I had to figure out how to reach all humanity. But Paul t tells us, you know, that God speaks through nature. God speaks through the conscience. People know, they intuit what is right and what is wrong, mm -hmm. even if they don't yet know the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. That aspect of it is part of the Holy Spirit moving in their lives. What is it? They have a spirit, a human spirit, that is within them seeking to be connected with God. And the Holy Spirit is presently trying to draw every human being. It's, it's the job of the Holy Spirit to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we encounter him in community, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Sometimes we encounter him in prayer, yeah. Some for some people through scripture. God talks to everyone individually, and he talks to people in manifold ways, in all kinds of ways. We're not all wired exactly the same. Some people might see visions <laughs> or dream dreams, and other people might encounter God through you know, music and worship. Mm. He is infinitely creative. He is infinitely adept and intuitive at trying to find the place of contact with each human being. So with your experience now for all these decades of teaching, studying New Testament, getting you know, you know, academically, uh, personally, et cetera, you, you came here and you had already come to faith when you were here in the beginning. And now it's been decades of the work and devotion that you put into all of this. Um, how would you describe is, your, your faith as it has evolved? Is it, is it quantitative? Is it qualitative? Is it both? Well, I hope it's qualitative. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope that it gets deeper and more mature. Mm -hmm. I have to say, Becoming a parent was something that really helped me mm -hmm. to finally come to grips with how much God loves us uh -huh. and how strong that love is. And I also know that just the process of aging helps to, you know, helps me to be able to relax about some things that are just not crises, you know. Uh -huh. one, of my, one of my lines with the kids always used to be, well, you know, this, this is not a crisis. This is not the end of the world. The end of the world is when Jesus comes back. This is just a minor problem, and we're going <laughs> to deal with it. You know, so just longevity and, and the ability to live, 
to, to feed on the things that are good for us. There's that beautiful scripture that says, whatever is good and pleasant and pure and holy and upright, dwell on those things. Mm. You know, we are what we eat, and that's true also in a spiritual sense. We need to pray. We need to read scripture. We need to fellowship and fill our minds and, and our hearts with those things that bring life. That was very quotable, that you are what you eat is also true spiritually. Mm-hmm. What a great understanding. Yes. Well. You know, because you know, we hear that, and especially someone who comes from the health field, you know, and, and looking at these types of things and the idea you are what you eat, but of course that would be true spiritually. Yes, and of course, I didn't invent that. That's in the New Testament. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but I mean, you know, just... But it is a principle. It's a principle, and it's a principle that I think it's great that it's brought to light in the New Testament and that it's brought to light here mm-hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, there's the material form of things that, you know, that, that people will allude to, but uh, what's the reflection of that in the spiritual context? It's, it, I just really think that that's a, a great representation and understanding. So mm-hmm. uh, this has been wonderful to spend time with you, and uh, I feel like I could spend you know, weeks having these conversations mm-hmm. with you and uh, appreciate uh, you know, not only you spending time here, but also all the work that you're doing here. Well, thank you. It's a real privilege to get to do this and to get to share some of these thoughts with you. And I hope when you come back with your family, we can meet them and have you guys over for dinner or something like that. Well, uh, count on it, and thank you okay. for that. that would so, be a pleasure. So thanks for your time and effort and energy. Well, again, I mean, it's a privilege to be part of this series. Thank you. That's it for this particular interview. Thanks for joining me. Really excited to take this ongoing journey with you as we keep bringing more content. If you haven't already, you really should subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of phenomenal content coming down the road into the future that you'll want to know about. Leave a comment down here. I think people would love to hear from you and then you can hear from them too. If you liked it, go ahead and give a like. It only takes half a second and share this with people that you care about. The world needs more light in it right now. So thanks for being with me. Hope to connect with you again soon. Thank you.